I'm Lynn Marlowe. Uh, I'm a research scientist at Facebook. Um, and I'm here at the uh, Social Graph Food Camp. And I think for somebody who's been studying social networks for a very long time, obviously in the last uh, couple of years, there's been an extreme sort of amount of excitement around um, exactly, you know, the subject matter that I study. Um, and namely, people have been rushing on to social networks. And um, it's really refreshing to come to a place like this and see that there are as many people concerned about exactly what that means, you know, both from a technological and, uh, you know, sort of business perspective, but also from a social perspective. So, um, you know, I, f I feel like um, the, you know, the conversations I've had um, lead me to believe that, you know, people are generally concerned about um, what is going to happen, you know, not what is going to happen in terms of, you know, who's going who's gonna to get bought or who's going to get sold, but like, you know, what's going to happen to all the people who use these services. And, you know, when you take the amalgam of every phone call and every um, IM message and every Facebook connection, you know, and you create one sort of graph, um, what you're left with is, you know, a pretty good representation of everything, you know, everything that matters to people. Um, and so most of the discussions we've been having, you know, seem to revolve around, like, what, what should we do with that? Should we, you know, mobilize it for political purposes? Should we, you know, make it uh, available to, you know, other companies so that people can migrate their, you know, themselves and their content, you know? Um, and today we, you know, we had a very good discussion about, you know, does this stuff make people happier? And I think that all these questions are, you know, are things that, you know, as both technologists and uh, humanitarians, we need to continue to ask ourselves, you know? I mean, we get caught up in the, in the rush of, like, you know, what's the next social network I need to be a member of, or what's the next technology I need to be using? And at the end of the day, you know, I mean, we need to just compare ourselves to ourselves four or five years prior and ask, like, you know, is our life any better than it was before? And so I think, uh, you know, it's been an enlightening couple of days. Um, I uh, uh, got my degree from the Media Lab at MIT, and my master's thesis was um, studying the associations of um, text, text to each other. You know, it was trying to understand how to classify text and what sorts of features make text, um, you know, easily understood by machines. Um, and what I realized when you spend, you know, two years looking at text, um, you know, there's, there just isn't a lot of life. And so my PhD thesis really revolved around understanding blogs and what, you know, sort of the, the, both the content production model and like what drove people to create blogs. And so that, you know, really was a, a shift from looking at information as a, you know, purely sort of informational aspect and understanding the social relevance. And like the, the project that Blogdex was really built around, you know, using social relevance to make information even more important. So understanding, you know, how people were talking about um, things and using that to, to rank and order and understand the, you know, kind of zeitgeist of what people are talking about. And in my introduction to social networks, you know, I mean, this is obviously, from the beginning, has been intimately tied to um, online communication. So, I mean, I've become, you know, a member of the traditional social networks um, community, but, you know, I've, I haven't studied social networks anywhere other than, you know, the way that they exist. Um, in an online representation. So, I mean, it, was, it is interesting that I've ended up, you know, working for both Yahoo um, and now Facebook because, um, you know, uh, there's, there are a lot of academics uh, who make use of the information that is available in both freely observable. And my PhD thesis obviously couldn't, you know, involve uh, corporate databases. But, um, you know, I mean, it, it, to some extent, if you want to be doing the research that answers these fundamental sociological questions that have been around for years and just not observable, you know, I mean, you need to have access to the data and the only way to get really close is to work for a company. So I think there's an interesting type of breed of, you know, kind of academic who now lives in the, lives in the corporation.